Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. On the line, ladies and gentlemen, from Nashville, Tennessee, I have BG7 and UGD7. What up, fellas? What's up, what's up, what's crazy? Yo, thank you both, first off, for joining the program, man. Yes, sir. Cool, cool. We'll, show, we'll, we'll bounce around, man, since we got two cats on the phone. You know, um, we'll just kind of bounce around, and, and whoever wants to jump in and answer the question first or second or whatever the case is, we'll uh, we'll, we'll make it work that way. But, um so Nashville, uh, Tennessee, take take me uh, take me back, man. What um, what do you guys know about gangs first making an appearance in Nashville, Tennessee? I got that detail. Uh, in the nineties, like uh, you know my uh my family came from, like uh my family came from my family from UG, you know, it came from uh the first come from uh, TSU. They came from TSU, and, you know, they got put down to TSU and stuff like that. I was a positive uh, motive and stuff, and they started business down here. Uh, when they came down here, uh, you know, uh, Pig Leg M, Kim Pig Leg M in the 90s, they came down here from TSU, and uh, they started business, man. We have just been spreading a lot from here and there, you know. We probably like... um. Uh, let me say we probably we probably like uh three thousand strong, mm. uh at least by five thousand strong down here right now. Mm. You know. We progressed a lot down here from back then, you know. Okay. But uh we still in movement. You know some of the gangs that were here before, you know, Bloods and Crips came along? Uh it was a uh it was a gang uh, uh gangster uh it was something that it was a gangster uh, and it's something that's in uh, Nashville before uh, gangs came, but you know that wasn't that strong. That wasn't that strong, you know. Uh, everybody always uh, said Crip. You know, Crip is the first thing to hit uh, Nashville. So you know, it's just so many gangs down here that's uh, that's positive down here. But you know, it, we it's a, that's the first thing. It was a gangster. I think it's gangster key. Or something that was a gang, a Nashville gang before Crips and uh, C's and B's came. Okay. What about um, like GDs, Vice Lords, and things like that? Did they have a presence out there? Uh, yeah, yeah. We we got G, we got GDs and Vice Lords, but they it's like a it's it, it's not they is not pushing at this situation. I mean, at this time right now because C's and B's have took over. Yeah, we don't touch the scene, you know, because it was it was organizations here, you know, before us, but we started hitting the scene like the early two thousand. Uh, that's when you uh, came down to Nashville. Gotcha. Oh, uh, no, not, not, not the early two thousands in the nineties. You know, my father, my father's UG. Uh, my uncle's M U G. Uh, my sister's M U G. Uh, so we was here, we was here in nineties, probably like ninety five. Okay. Well, shit! I would love to hear both of your experiences. What um, talk to me about what it was like growing up in Nashville. Um, and it was uh, you know, uh, Nashville. It's been fun. It was a lot of uh, you know, this was a capital of like uh, well, you know, this the country. You know, whatever you can get off here, uh, it's a lot of experience here. If you like, you come here, you come here and want to make a movement. This way to this way you can come and make a movement and uh and start business. So like a, a lot of uh, you know, me growing up in Nashville has been bad. I grew up in the prizes, I grew up a J C Napier prizes, you know. Um I grew up strong down here, so it was a great experience, man. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be me, you know, without it. You know. I wouldn't be me without U G. You know, it took over, uh, took over the project. So I did a good life, you know, fighting and uh, fighting, standing up for yourself, and teaching me how to be strong down here. Mm -hmm. Not a bad and also, you know, I got, I got a lot of family members dead. I got a, a lot of two of my brothers dead. Uh, you know, come from UG, you know, gang, 
gang violence, but uh, we made it. Mm-hmm. What about you, BG7? Well, I grew up in Edge Hill, so, you know, we had a lot of fighting, a lot of, you know, going on, growing up, because it's mostly family over there anyway. So I came up around a lot of family. Most of my family was Crip. You know what I'm saying? I'm the only one that really made it out, you know, that was UG. So I started banging UG at an early age, and I took it I took it from there. So that's how I was my end. Just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat. I had to rush out of my bed because I was late for work. My motherfucking rent is due and my boss is a jerk. Pencil pushing at the job, an intermediate clerk. My mama told me to go to school. I'm going bananas berserk. I work every day, don't know where the money goes. My girl is big and pregnant, want me to paint her toes. Only a high school diploma, I'm smelling the aroma. The greenery is burning in my room. But life is a mama Sita. She glad to meet ya. She back coming soon. <laughs> Better get the broom, my nigga. You clean up your house. She got a little more time to back out, cause she ain't your spouse. But do I love her? I need her. Maybe respect how I treat her. But when I see my baby, I'ma wanna go and feed her. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. I was born in a space and time where people were stupid. Everybody looking for love, fucking with Cupid. Who did whatever they wanted to do with black fist up? Stand to opposition, keeping Hennessy in a cup. Drink, nigga, tell me what you think about God. The Bible is written by man, so people. People think of a side form your own opinion before you listen to white men. The system has got you on American bandstand. And when you get home, you got to look in the mirror. Take off all the makeup and the wig is more clear. I fear a day when I can't smoke my weed. A drink, my drink, my nigga, you know what I need. But success is a motherfucker. Shoes to feel. I got a baby at home. I need them big time deals. This shit just got real. It's going down tonight. Somebody Somebody gon' get jack, hope they don't put up a fight. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Blow that smoke right out your lungs You go to church every Friday Now you're speaking in tongues You gave up chilling with friends Pastor got a bands Repenting on your knees Confessing all your sins to the end How far will it go while you make it, boy? He eating all your candy Tasting your almond joy Troy, I can help you Let me take you to outer space If you're looking for God Meditate to the perfect place Race, we moving at the speed of light Traveling fast through a black hole And in my day and night. I'm trying to fight against the norm, my eyes are open, you see, cause I can only be me, not what you want me to be, classy, nigga born in the 77, daddy named Orlando, my name Kevin, Lucille, my mama, the girl true raised me, Kevin and Delilah, they having a baby, just give me a little bit of peace, steady job and some food to eat, just give me a little bit of peace, steady Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat.
buy and sell and log on to computers. And, you know, she, I think, made a, an oblique reference to that. So how do you stop that? Well, if it's written in prophecy, it feels like all of the, the events on Earth are moving in that direction. And really the only solution if you're on board a sinking ship like the Titanic is to get into the lifeboat and unmoor it. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job is Nashville more of a crip city, a blood city, pretty even? It's more crip city. Man. Uh, it's more of a crip city. Mm. It's more a crip city. We we got neighborhoods, mafia. Uh, we got neighborhoods, mafia, uh, uh, rolling period, uh, underground, uh, shit, uh, uh, you know, uh, all of it. We we got we got all of it. Uh, twenties, twenties, uh, twenties to the hundreds. It, it, it's everything down here. You know, it's a crip city. You know, even with Snoop Dogg and uh, first Crip song, you know, it was banging down here. You know, we loved it. Everybody turned crip. You know what? That that's a you know, yeah. That's then Mac Ten, uh huh. Then Mac Ten, Mac Ten. When they start listening, it's, it's blues down here now. You know what I'm saying? But Crips take over. Yeah, I was interviewing a young cat from. Um, actually, I interviewed a dude from uh, No Limit, Mister Servon, and um, he yeah. was telling me that Mac Ten was one of the reasons uh, people started banging blood in New Orleans. So you're saying that was kind of the case in um, in Nashville also. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the case right. you know, um, down here. Uh, you know, no, uh, you know, no limit. Them used to be down here. Also, you know, uh, in the hot boys used to be down here. So you know, a lot of things. Yeah, uh, but you know, Snoop. You know, Snoop uh, inspired everybody down here to be a crip. You know, so shit. Everybody's crip. You know, grandmas, granddads, grand. Everybody's crip. Interesting. Okay, See, I was inspired. I was inspired when I was young. You know, I was named uh, seven as a uh, young age, and I, I actually didn't know what seven was. So I got uh, so I got by like twelve, and I, you know, I was like, man, why they call me seven? And then a thing that they called me seven, my whole family was a crip. You know, so I, you know, just a uh, grew up the thing. It's a family. It's a family thing. You know, we bang. Do you know if the movie Colors had any like uh, any impact on um on gangs down there, or did it even was it even on the radar? Uh yeah, it's, it's, it's the Colors are on uh, radar. See, like in the nineties, it was it was a very like a a little hard for like what's now like. See now, it's uh people can allow to do a lot of things. Like when my grew up, I grew up in a project that was all Crips that. Anybody was red that comes through there got got killed. You know, my grandma and never uh, always told me don't wear red in this neighborhood and this and that. We never wore red. We never never wore red. So, but like now, you know, uh, the lounges now is uh, a lot of Crips and Bloods get along now. So, uh, I guess they, you know, they talk to each other in, the, in my projects. But at that time, it wasn't none of that. You know, mm. you. Like blood stayed on one side of the city, and Crip stayed on the other side. You, you see them at the store when they get killed. It was vice versa. And then, like you know, the thing now when like at at that age, like California, uh, you know, they came down here with a lot of money and uh, a lot of experience to get on. So, like uh, you know, the big homies, you know, if it was a way to get some money, it was a way to get some money. They had to, had to, had this uh had this side of the city. You know what I'm saying? If the Crips had money, shit, everybody want to be Crip. You know. Mm. Okay. So they, they took over. Did you want to chime in on that, BG? Yeah, I, I, what he's saying is facts. You know, like I said, when we started taking over, when we started banging, everything changed. Uh, history. You know, the scenery, everybody that came together then later on in the late 2000s, you know, around my era, the late later 2000s, everybody is more respecting. It wasn't more of, it was bang, it was more of getting money. Mm. 
So that's where a lot of toes came in, you know, selling drugs, slang, and all that. It came a big part of that, too. So okay. it's, it's all fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but see, like a lot. See, I am I'm in, was in the banging area. You know, I did 10 years in penitentiary. Uh, you know, I rival uh, Hoover, you know. I, you know, I killed a Hoover, you know, and that was in my age, in my age group of this right here of, you know, of that. So, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of got better as a, better now, but you know, in my age uh, uh, group, uh, man, we, it, it wasn't planned that nobody could come in my neighborhood. Our territory was territory. I would like to um, ask you, UGD7, you just said you did 10 years in the PIM? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Um, explain everybody out there, you know, what your personal experience was like, you know, as an active gang member entering the penitentiary. Oh, um, see, my uh, active, you know, I went in there at 17, so, uh, man, uh, you know, as pen- you see down here in Nashville, it's just like, I don't know like it is in, uh, like, St. Quinn or something like that, but down here, it's still the same thing, like rolling, stay together, uh, Hoover, stay together, blood, stay together. And, uh, you know, I came at a young age, uh, you know, looking up to the big homies up in there. So uh, it was a lot of war, you know. I got stabbed. I got stabbed. Um, you know, I went to Max. Uh, I actually had 30%. At that time, I had to do my whole sentence. Because you know, being active at that you know, at that time, and you know, uh, you ain't going to the back. We, we're gonna go to war, uh, but it was a lot of shit going on, man. It was the NBA. Uh, I've been through NBA in there. Uh, NBA is no blood allowed, so I went to a penitentiary. There. A, a blood started something. We had to get all the bloods off the compound. Um, so that was a lot of stuff too, and then it, it was a thing that. Rollers and got in, got into it with the Hoovers and I got stabbed. I got, you know, I got stabbed. So man, it was man, it's been a lot of shit. It's been a lot of stuff, you know. But I made it. You know, I made it. You know, what I'm saying it's active, and I, I I love to see the little homies. Uh, even like BG uh, BG Seven man, uh, progressing to uh, get their ass to stay along and uh, man get the shit together, they get they really get a lot of stuff together that we couldn't do as my age, you know? So I'm glad to see them active like that. That's dope. And maybe BG seven, can you elaborate on what he's talking about? <coughs> well what I mean by that is getting people together. Huh? Yeah, getting people together and stuff. Yeah, by being a younger homie, you know what I'm saying? I've been active out here trying to get homies together like as far as you know what I'm saying, family wise you know, getting the kids trying to make something positive as, you know, something that already kind of was broken, bringing more people, you know, having them on the right track as a unit. Because once you move as a unit, you know, everything else will fall in place. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes people want to be hard-headed, but, you know, it's all, it's, it comes as in, you know, progress and growth. Once you have growth and progress, you can, you know, you obtain – and you can succeed at anything you can possibly. So that's why I have a lot, a lot on, you know, on me is progress and being shit. broke. I love that shit. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. What, uh, what's the, the Latino and, um, and Mexican gang presence like out there? Well, it's very, it's very low. Like the, the community out here of blacks versus, you know, Latino, it's, it's more black populated in Nashville. I know some people think like, oh, you know, it's country out there or, you know, it's, it's not really diversity, but it's actually a lot, a lot more blacks out here, mm-hmm. especially the section that we're from. Of uh, of Nashville, so it it that takes a big toll on everything too as well. So, um, at my time, uh, it's the decisions like that, like see in the penitentiary, even even in the penitentiary, like I I know what he had, and uh, they stand the ground too, but uh, you know, like the MS 13s and the BC 
uh, Brown Pride, you know, they probably ain't got that in California. It started in Nashville. The Mexicans got uh, Brown Pride down here, you know, and uh, Brown Pride, the MS-13, the Mexican Mafia, they go against each other in the penitentiary. So, you know, um, man, they, you know, you know, they go hard too, you know. Yeah. I, I never, uh, man, they go hard, you know. In, in the penitentiary down here, it's like they couldn't hear it up. Yeah, they're probably so small in numbers that they have to show that they're about that life times 10. Yeah, yeah, like times 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know what, a little bit more about yeah. prison. I would love to, to talk a little bit more about that real quick. Um, who, who? I don't like to use this word, but this is the best way I can say it, but who runs the, the prisons out there in Tennessee? Crips. Crips, okay. Uh, I can say Crips and uh, probably the GDs, probably the Crips and probably the Crips and GDs. Okay, Crips and GDs, they uh, they uh, you know they they took over. Mm. They took over uh, a lot of a lot of blood. You know, they ain't bloods no more. You know, mm. <laughs> they ain't bloods no more uh, in the situation. They they you know. They slaughtered. They get they get slaughtered in compounds that uh they get, they ain't gonna win. They can't win. Yeah, that's the lowest number. And um, <clears throat> what were you gonna say? No, I'm saying that's the lowest number in the penitentiary is the bloods, and it's just man, it, they ain't win. They ain't winning the fight. Mm. Yeah. Now, um, I would like to chat with you guys about. You, do you guys keep up um, with any, you know, hip hop stories, things like that that's going on out there in the hip hop world? Oh uh, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I love, let me yeah. talk to let me talk to the, to my man BG real quick here. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with King Von. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, for, you know, for my audience out there who aren't familiar with King Von, very popular Chicago drill rapper. He was next up. He had everything, the look, the flow. Um, long story short, he gets into it with a, a rival uh, outside of Atlanta, Hookah Bar, Quando Rondo. Um, and within, you know, just a few seconds of them fighting, um, dude named Lil Timmy comes out and just lets off and, and mm-hmm. you know, lets off into King Von. I'm sure you know the story of my man BG. I'm just breaking it down for everybody out there. Um, right. So my question for you, um, I would love your, you, you know, your thought on this. And we obviously don't condone homicides or murder on my show. But, um, you know, in a situation like that, do you think Lil Timmy did what Lil Timmy was supposed to do? Well, coming up, you know, as a youngster, like what I would say, uh, he wanted the reputation. He wanted, you know, he wanted that that position where if I take somebody out, you know, I have the right, you know, to take him out because I wanted the status or, you know, or the rank or whatever you may call it. He wanted that position where he said he done something so vital for his organization or his gang, wherever he was at that time. He wanted him to be that man. He wanted to be the top dog, in other words. Do I condone that? No, because personally, for me, I'm a fighter. Okay, so when I came up as being the youngest, fighting and stuff, and the prize and stuff, that's that's what I was brought on. The guns and stuff came later in my generation. With me, it did. But no, did I do I agree with that? What he done? No, not at all. Yeah, sad that it just seems like rappers are easy food right now. I mean, they're getting it from from everywhere. You know, they're getting shot, they're getting their chains stolen. Um, wh- how do you how do you think a rapper with gang ties should move when they're going from city to city, state to state? Well, they should be precautious, first thing. You know, that's the first mode. Uh, be mindful and be, be uh, aware of their surroundings because at any given time, anything can happen. Anything can break out. Anything can happen unexpectedly, especially if you're the top icon of the time being a young being around my age and stuff is very important, you know, to be mindful because anything, like I said, anything can happen, uh, anything can jump off, you know. Um, with that being said, if I was that person, I always like me, 
just personally, I'm always aware of my surroundings, and I never lack. I never go lacking anywhere. So that that's my biggest thing. Do you think there's, for, I guess for lack of better words, do you think that they should check in? Yeah, in a way, they should check in. You know, they should, you know, make sure, you know, if you have, say, bodyguards and stuff, bodyguards should know every, your every move, basically. Even if you're going to take a trip, <laughs> tell them where you're going. Because anything, like I said, anything can happen. You can get jacked, stand, robbed, shot, you know, beat up, anything. From a person, you know, that may be my favorite, favorite that person, whoever you are, you know, at that time. So that's what I that's what I really believe in. I told her I loved her. She said she want to see the city bus She don't want to ride the city bus Because she's new to the town I advise, look for truth There is a lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud Dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring it down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me saw the other day with the baby ain't life crazy i think about it once in a while when it's cloudy outside and the sun goes none of these drugs do what they supposed to yeah and what's the point of hurting people that you're close to yeah most of my life i've been following stars knowing i ain't really had to go that far come to find out it's the truth i already know A little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Are you familiar with, you know, the Chicago drill scene in particular? I'm not too familiar with it, but I heard about it. Okay, okay. Um, I'm just curious, um, are you familiar with the way that a lot of these rappers are dissing their um, their rivals, dead homies, you know, saying I'm smoking on such and such pack. Yeah. Okay, smoking on, and you know, no disrespect, yeah. smoking on Tuca, you know, things like that. You've, you've heard that um, whole, yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what you think about that whole aspect of, of hip-hop. That's taking, you know, dissing to a whole other level when you're, you're actually dissing the dead homies of your rival. Yeah, when you, yeah, when you dissing the dead homies, of, of your rival, uh, rival gang member, or you know, whatever the case may be, I find it very disrespectful. I, I'll feel the same way. I would get at a person if they diss my dead homies, or you know, they diss my game because I, 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 you know, I carry myself, you know, respectful way, and also, you know, what I'm saying for my fellow gang members out there and stuff. I honestly, you know, it's like a family. So if I feel if I'm being this, I probably get into, but I take it to another perspective where if I see you, we're going to fight and leave it alone. It ain't too much with me with the gun violence. It lets a person take it there where my life is free. But in this fist fight combat, hand on hand combat, I'm down for it. Yeah. I wish it was more like that. Like, I'm for rappers squashing beefs in the ring. Like, you know, we put 50,000 each up and, you know, just, just – just squash it out in the ring. But unfortunately, you probably know this better than I do, but a lot of these rappers, they just can't fight, which is why they're quick to pull out, you know, a weapon. A lot of people man. nowadays, period. Yeah, those are facts, man. It's just, you know, it's, we in the time now, my generation now, it's a person is quick to pull a gun and fight. And it's always been that way for a while now. Yeah, man. And I don't too much agree with it, but like I said, I came from, from my perspective, my, my side, it's fighting. That's what I love to do. Yeah. I like to squabble. <laughs> That's what I do. So yeah, you know. Let me ask uh, UGD Seven. Uh, are you familiar with Takashi Six Nine? 
Yeah, I'm 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 familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. Some, uh, okay. I would love your perspective. You know, in hindsight of the whole situation, especially since you did 10 years and you know obviously it sounds like you didn't fold or, or break or anything um what are your opinions on somebody uh, like a takashi 69 and my second part to that question is um who do you think is more at fault for letting you know for, for who do you think is more at fault takashi 69 or the gang you know for letting him get that close to the organization uh, i think um uh, i think the gang because you gotta do background on people, and if you ain't doing background on people, then like, chill. You know, you can't bring everybody to your family. You can't bring everybody to your family. You do your background on people, and uh, you know, you know, I don't, I don't mess with people to snitch and stuff like that. That's out of my league. You know, uh, we kind of get rid of you if you're doing all that. Uh, so, and then you know, I've been to penitentiary. You know, this ain't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do the snitching, mm-hmm. and I don't accept it either. You know, because if you ain't, if you, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you ain't got to do it. Nobody ain't forcing you to do nothing. It's your decision. So you know, yeah. Like right, so, he told you know, get rid of them. But uh, you know, I can't speak with uh. Blood's got it going on and stuff like that, but I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I don't like it because, you know, you ain't got to do it. And if you're going to be a man, stand up for it. What about you, BG? Yeah, like you said, you know, snitching, you know, that ain't solid. That's, that's, that's against the code anyway. It's just a brain anyway because once you're a snitch, you're always going to be a snitch. And once you, you know, put that, that step on your head as a snitch, you know what I'm saying? It's not go, not nothing gonna go well for a person anyway. It's it's better to man up to your situation and man up to the situation that went on with you, what you had that time for the man up for it. That's all I can say mm-hmm. on that one. Yeah. What was the general, you know, consensus over in 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 your hood when you know you found out Nipsey Hussle was murdered by, you know, a person from his own set? And how could that have been prevented if it could have been prevented? Well, I can't too much, you know, speak on that situation, on that behalf, but, you know, it's like, it shouldn't have happened, and I don't think, you know, it it should have happened that way. You know, you got, like I said, you got to live by the code. You got to, you live, you know, you live what you preach. So, with that being said, no, nah, Nipsey, Nipsey was a real one. Nipsey didn't deserve it at all. You know, he's always going to be a wreck, you know, in the crew somewhere. You know, Nipsey did a lot for people. He did a lot for the hood. You know, he did a lot for the buzz out there that wasn't working, and, you know, had background. He, he deserved that, that spot. So people can, you know, to have somewhere to go and have somewhere, you know, they can call their own. So Nipsey, you know, he was, he was, a, he was a great dude. Like, he was, he was a real one. Yeah, it was a yeah. He was a real. One. Yeah, sad day in hip hop, man. That was a Definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, he was a real man. I I like him, Nipsey, man. He, um, he got a, he had a lot of respect for me, man. And, uh, he a real one, man. He uh, he stand on his word. Uh, he stand on his word, and then he did for the community something something that I'm trying to do now to me to be in who I am today. And learn from all the mistakes that I did. I'm just out here trying to help help my youth and my um uh, and my little homies, man. Try to make some better out of themselves. I ain't trying to teach them a nigga thing. I'm trying to make them better, man. Well, they ain't gotta go through the penitentiary that I went through and see the see the lights that I went through to uh to you know learn a lesson. I was shit. I I, I learned a lesson for them. I want them to move great. It's just you and me. School.
coolest in section, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go to recess, but I take that away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200,000, I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. On. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug. They trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy. Replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up and now we two steps beyond these lames. Kicking up dust. Never running from the smoke. Hold up. We really want the smoke only from Clone God though. Let's go. One plus. Plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. I'm a Gemini, bitch. So you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars. So pardon if I snap, girl. I'm sorry, bitch. Pass me the lighter. I'm about to play street fighter. Hot dude in that pussy. Like my name, Ken Ryu. She says she never kissed a girl. Well, bitch, tonight. You experiment, put this tablet on your tongue and just enjoy the experience. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. A little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. How old were you, um, UG, when you jumped off the porch? Uh, I jumped off the porch in like 11 Okay Because, uh, you know, my whole family in the garage is in the My whole family is gang members The same thing that I am uh, so you know, I jumped off and left. I, I I seen I seen it happening to me before it even, before it even happened. What were you so intrigued by? Huh? What 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 were you so intrigued by? What made you you know say I want to do that? Uh, it was a lifestyle. It was a lifestyle of my family. So you know, like it, like like today, I still you know I still bang the hood because my whole my whole family bang the hood. I love the hood. I love it. It's, it's like my, my religion. It's like my religion of me growing up, you know. Uh, like, we, we, what I treat about it, we family, we stick together. Uh, and loyalty, loyalty and respect, you know. I, I love my family to stick together, you know. We have a nice time together when we, when we, when we can. Yeah, nowadays especially. Um I, w- I would love to to ask you this question. We'll go to you know fantasy land, hypothetical world, real quick, because um, you did say that you made some mistakes. You know that you want to steer young cats away from. But let's say you could talk to an eleven year old you. You know we're in fantasy land, right? You could talk to an eleven year old eleven year old you. Um, what what would you tell him? With eleven eleven old me, uh, man, what I've been through, man. Uh, I tell a man, uh, gotta stay strong, man. Don't be a leader. Be a leader. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. It's a, it's a lot of chances in the world we can make it. As being a black man to, today, man, we can make it. Uh, the spares there, this, and make it, make some, be something. Be something and make it, you know. I try hard to be somebody, you know. Well, I don't want I don't want them to um, catch felonies and stuff, man. I want them to be something. See, my little homies now, they great. They 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 were still in school and they're gonna be somebody. They're gonna be somebody. They're gonna help U G to be something they ain't never seen before. Yeah, like a marathon, something you know that is gonna live like, on. Yeah, like a marathon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. BG7, um, it seems like we're going backwards a little bit. I mean, crime is up everywhere. Homicides are up 
everywhere. Um, I grew up in L.A. in the 90s, and, you know, in 1992, we had, like, 2,500 homicides in our city. Um, and it just seems like we're going that way. Um, if you could talk to, you know, some of these young cats out here, what would what would you say to them to hopefully, you know, turn around and going back in the, a different direction? Well, what I tell them, you know, stay focused. Stay dangerous. Stay mindful. You know, if if you if you can turn away from you know from the gang lifestyle, just do it. Don't do it because you guys think it's bad. Don't do it because you think oh it's a it's a hit the thing right now. You know, what I'm saying make sure you make the right decision. And if you are, if you do become one, make sure you do things the right way. Make sure you go to school, finish up school. The school words should be your game. That's what you should be banging them good. So, you know, that's that's a big part of me. So that's why I had to make a turnaround, too. I done progressed a lot. I done learned from my mistakes. And I done what I done. And I also, now, I'm more wiser. You know, I'm prospering. I, lo- I love to use the word prosper because I'm moving to a whole nother direction, a whole nother season where it's a whole new year and a whole new me. So that's what I'm built on. That's what I'm focused on. Mm-hmm. You know, UGD7, I have a random well, question. Um I have a random question since you're a little bit older. Um, is is Nashville experiencing gentrification by any chance? Um, no, not really. Okay, not really. I'm still I'm st- I'm still in the same neighborhood I grew up in, but I'm uh, I got a house and stuff. You know, I'm out of the neighborhood, but I, I go back to my neighborhood every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I go back to my neighborhood every day, so I I, I know how it looks and I know the murderers. Uh, and I know I know everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. They ain't gonna stop murdering. Uh, there's still territory, but uh, now we shared a block with uh the forties, so you know, uh, it's still the same way, you know. Uh, but you know, they just moving. They just they growing. You know, they growing, and it's it's getting a little crazy because the, the like you said, like the shot music, the drill music, the drill music, uh. In, in California, they they want to be both of them. They want to be both of them at the same time. So it's a little, it's a little. Uh, mm. If you play with them in the neighborhood, then we'll murder you. Mm. Yes, ain't shit changed is what you're saying, basically. Ain't, ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. They got respect. They got respect. So just don't disrespect them because there's not. I can't tell the little homies to stop them. Mm. I can say, hey, hey man, this ain't what you ain't supposed to do, and this is what you're supposed to do, but uh. Let you get on their bad side. Let you let, let them feel like you disrespected. I don't care who you is. Mm. They will get you. Yeah. That's why there's so many murders. Everybody want to be the boss. Mm-mm-mm. Damn, man. Well, um, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen. BG7, um, do you have any anything you want to promote? The floor is yours. And then uh, UGD7 also, you know, if you have anything you want to promote or any shout-outs or whatever the case is, you know, go for it, man. Well, I want to shout out to the homies in L.A., you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay up, stay dangerous. You know, I love all y'all dearly. And all your most definitely, I'm going to be back out there, y'all. Look for me. Holler at me. BG7. Tune up. Yes, sir. UGD, you got any last words? Uh, uh, I want to shout out to all the UGs, all the UGs, and all the road uh, in California, New York, uh, North Carolina, uh, L.A., and, uh, Tennessee, period. You know, I stand on... I stand on another big home in, in Tennessee, you know, we got the state. But uh, I want to promote, you know, I got a red thing, uh, country bangers, choppers and guitars. You know, I got the shirts coming out, you know. Uh, you can catch me on Facebook, uh, UGD7, and uh, Instagram, UGD7. Shirts is coming soon, and projects yeah. is coming soon. Chop, what was it? So, ch- unity. Ch- say it again. It was uh, uh, choppers and what? Choppers and good stars. Uh, that's dope. Choppers and good stars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, cut your bank. I got the cut your bank t-shirts coming out. That's dope. I'm gonna definitely have to add you on Facebook and uh, Instagram, and as soon as those shirts drop, I'll definitely cop one to support. Yes, sir. Cool, cool. Yes, sir. Yo, gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, maybe we can do this again in a few months. Just catch up and you know go a little bit deeper. Um, I dig your guys' vibe, and I want to wish you every, you know the best uh, best of health and everything out there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank yes, you, fellas. Sir, most All right. Cool. You'll have a good night now. Peace, man. Peace.